darkness is, is hidden mystery. That's what darkness is. Dark matter is light hiding. You know? So it is, it is, that's, by the way, that's why there's a day and there's a night. The day reveals the night. The day reveals the mystery of the night. The universe is 91% dark because it is waiting for revelation. So all creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Matter is waiting, but all the other realms cannot be manifest because guess what? They are waiting for us. So we don't know the world yet. We do not know the world that God created. We know less than 5% of what God created. Less than 5% is visible to us again because the only way those realms can be revealed is by the light that explodes through us. You know? So we are the ones who are going to light the universe, right? So the axial principle is that God dwells in thick darkness. <laughs> That all of this is God hiding himself. The Bible says, Verily, thou art the God who hidest yourself. Take that scripture seriously, right? So, quantum physics tells us, really, in a sense, that it is our capacity to focus or our perception, our framing of reality that gives it the form is out. So, the world that is going to manifest from darkness is only going to create what? Be like the form, be framed by us. It's there, but it's not framed yet. It's there, but it's not, cannot manifest because it's not been framed. And God deliberately left it there. It is in a quanta, it's in a, a movement of itself. So that as we move, they begin to take the form of what God, of, of what we are actually thinking. One of the reasons why we are able to go to the, the edges of the universe, one of the reasons God has allowed us to actually go to, to see galaxies is because it gives us a frame of reference. But as we begin to think about them, more worlds get created, <clears throat> right? So what is quantum physics? Quantum physics is the idea that nothing is solid that things become solid according to who is looking. So let's say now, which is what we're talking about, the guy asked the question today, whilst the other question says, how come we're creating missiles that are killing people? They become what they are by what we're looking at. We're looking at death, therefore we're creating death instruments. But what will happen if the guy was looking at the atom, or let's say the atom that was split, let's say that the atom was looked upon by a believer who was thinking, how man can become like God. The atom will have reacted differently. But he was looking by a man who had death in his mind. So it became what it is that the man had in mind. It's not that he became death, it's that he gave birth, he gave birth to death. So he said it, I've become death and the killer of worlds. So by looking into the atomic realm, with the eyes of man's destruction, we were able to curl out of it and in fact we messed the way the atom is supposed to manifest. Because according to the Egyptians, the atom is the foundation of life. <laughs> so there's something they knew about the atomic stuff that didn't cause them to destroy stuff. But what happened to it? Why is it that our atomic structure is destroying life and not creating life? Why is it that it's not lifting up 500 tons of stone, but shattering it? Why were the Egyptians able to use their understanding of atom, which they actually made a god, <laughs> to do the things that they did? Why was Gobeki sanctuary created? We know by sound, but the atomic principle has sound in it. But instead of giving us a sound of life, it gives us a sound of destruction. So. What we're discovering in quanta is that the way the world functions between wave and particles has to do with who is looking, who is observing. The way that God created the world was by what? Speaking and looking. 
Speaking is a wave. Looking is the particle creation. When people are in a room talking, every molecule, and they are not looking, molecules are moving in light waves. But you know, you can't tell the scientists that. But I do believe that it's a difference between sight and hearing. The wave has to do with hear. You know. The particle, the particular stuff where it takes a form and freezes, has to do with sight. So sight congeals it puts it and holds it in space. Sound releases it. So again, this is another thing. We're trying to create something we've not seen. Or we try, we speak, but we don't see. Therefore, what we speak doesn't come to pass. So for me, the way quantum physics works is because of its, because of its capacity to move from wave to what? To particle. That believers already have the answer. I speak, then I see. Right? My speech is a way. My sight is holding the frame in space and causing the stuff to become material. You know? So I, I believe that if we really want, want to know the world, we've got to start seeing the world from the perspective of God. And by the way, God closed the 95% of the world because man's sight can only frame it according to evil. So God clothed 95% of the universe he created in darkness until we begin to think in terms of light, not new age light, but in terms of the light that is God, that is Christ, that is us. You know? So we're coming. You know, the time is coming, as you know, and we're already doing it. There are scientific breakthroughs now that if you told some people, they would think you're talking witchcraft, that can actually open a gate through a wall without breaking the wall. And the wall, the particles, and they push things through it to another side. So what do you see? You're talking about all kinds of stuff that is possible now. You're talking about not invading somebody's body, just using sound to create operation where the person has no God. That sounds to me like the thing the primitive people used to do to shout at stuff, to speak on something that is in somebody's body till it dissipates, to sing over it with sound. It's just that they didn't have the scientific capacity to harness the sound at the level that we have right now. I mean, right now, there used to be when you have gallbladder, they will wait until you suffer. What well, well, gallstone, excuse me. What do they do now? They just put a sauna on it and they shatter it. It's a sound. They are even doing the same thing with other diseases in the body of man. And I think that when they find the right frequency of sound, the human cell will be able to regenerate itself. That's part of the scientific principle. That's why the Bible says the word became flesh. Because the word in becoming flesh is actually restructuring the human body. So we, we live in a period, I think we're going to move beyond the quanta, like we've already done, the qualia, the things that are smaller than that. You know, in the ancient world, in the, in the Middle East, Christians, Christian theologians asked the question. They asked this question. They said, how many angels can dance on the head of a pig? They said, how many angels can dance on the head of a being? Which is the whole idea of bits of information. How many bits of information can you put on a little being? People say, oh, but one of the guys who was a, a scientist who just died, who was from Nigeria, who wrote, who is a, a software uh, engineer, he said that it is possible to put over a billion bits of information, trillions actually, on a simple head of a being that our softwares are way too big. Now, go you go figure that. But Christians have been talking about angels that can dance on the head of a pin, which is the issue of information. How many information can you actually put on the head of a pin? Right now, you can take a small pin and put thousands of bits of information in it. But the guy argued that a bit of information is capable of happening, happening 
many, many. That is billions of bits of information. We just haven't figured it out yet. Right? So, I think that when dealing with quantum physics, that we need to begin to look spiritually from how the world is structured. Because if you don't look at the world from a spiritual structure, then the physical reality is meaningless. You know, then it has, it's an end in itself. You know, so if everything is a monad, and, and this is a scientific term that was coined by Leibniz, Leibniz of, uh, of, of, of England, he said, man is a monad. Everything in the universe is a monad, a part a distinct, like a ball that sits on its own. But we know that every monad has a door. <laughs> See? So which means it has the capacity to open up. So if you say scientifically it has a capacity to be a what? A wave and to be solid. And solid matter can be returned to wave form. Like gold, for example. You can actually take gold and return it to a living form called monotomic. You can take it, vibrate it to a monotomic level where it actually gives you a living thing and it becomes a life-giving thing. You can actually a living matter. But anyway, so, so everything in, that is in the world has a life in it. Okay? That's the whole idea of Panther, is they are, these things are not really dead. If they have electrical charge, if they're able to be used as electricity, then there's energetic systems in them that mimic the spirit and mimic the flow of word. But somebody's got to open them up. God bless you. <laughs>